and today. And so if that is welcome, then definitely you're taking a step in the right direction. Um, but before we get into that, I probably I want to give you a high level overview about my wellness journey. Um, it started in 2017. I came to a point in my life where I was investing so much into everybody and everything else. I did not have anything inside to pull from. And what I've learned about wellness is you can't give what you don't have. And so if you look at wellness as kind of like an overall bank, I went to go make a withdrawal and it came back with insufficient funds. So on October 21st, 2017, I decided to take a deep dive into wellness. And that kind of brought me to where I am today. So uh, we're going to go ahead and break you out in breakout rooms. Introduce yourself, uh, maybe say what industry you're in, and then just, uh, hey, where did your wellness work journey begin? And then we'll go from there. Okay, so introduce yourself and industry, and what was the other one? Oh, journey on Yep, yep. I'm a, bad, I'm a bad assistant, guys. <laughs> Mary Baker, <laughs> uh, journey to your wellness. If I can even spell today, you know? Oh. Whatever. All right. So here's the breakout room. We're going to give you about what? 10 minutes, Jason? Five? Let's go uh, five minutes. Five and we'll minutes. Back and talk. Yep. That means oh, you're going to yeah. talk fast, people. Uh oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ready? Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Oh, why is everyone in? Hold on, guys. I guess What's the... yeah. <clears throat> my breakout room is not doing anything. All right, ready, go. Oh, join. Okay. You, how about that? Hey. <laughs> You guys got kicked out. But here we are. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Hold on. I'm busy like putting people in. I'm like, what is happening? I'm going to put you guys in room two. Hi, Mary. Michelle, you're on mute, okay? Hello. Okay, I'm here. Thank you. Uh-oh. Did the screen get frozen? Can anybody see me, hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. We're all still with Dr. Leland. Michelle, with you're actually on. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking with Jason. And I was like, oops. And then it got transferred out. I'm like, that's okay. Okay, I'm going to go join. Is it join? Yeah. Got it. Lonnie's in room three. Go for it. Where do I go? What do I do? Uh, I'm doing just this. hit join. Okay. Hang on. Uh, all I have is leave right now. I don't have a join. Okay, so hold on. Let me put you on room three. Where are you? Oh, you're in there. Room three with Ishani and Richard. Really? <laughs> it says, it says How is that not possible? Today. That's okay. Just talk to me. Talk to me. What is your... To introduce to me. This is good because then we could do a one-on-one, -on -one, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. Talk Gorgeous. to me. I'm so excited so nice to finally to meet you. I know, right? Yeah. Tell me about your industry. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, I am a promo ho from a long time ago, yo. And that means that uh, you know, natural pom-poms, I'm always applauding other people because it was really, you know, it was the thing that I was looking for in life was some somebody to accept me and love me for wherever I was at in life. 
And um, so my journey really included a, a lot of despair and, and overcoming and reinventing myself because of what it was that, you know, got pounded into or out of me as a kid. And even later in life, it was just ongoing. And so uh, part of my um, wellness journey included writing and um, writing. Uh, I made it up an I believe list and I wrote at the top, I believe. And I just wrote every thought I had, every single thing in my head. And it took a few months, every freaking thought, line by line by line. And that was when I decided to, to uh, reassess and go, wait a minute, we've got counter counter things here. You know, money's good, money's bad. You got to sell your soul to make a buck. You know, like I found, right? Like I found all this stuff that got put in there somehow, some way. And so it enabled me to really do a personal evaluation and go, mm, not this, not this, not this. And I knew what I didn't want. I just didn't know what I did want. Mm. And that, that is, you know, the flip side of the, you know, the same coin, really, it's just as valuable to know what you don't want. And um, yeah, so part of my process has been to, to write and um, one particular Mother's Day was coming up and I wanted to make this beautiful card for my mom since I'd been doing that since I was like five poetry and all that Dr. Seuss is alive. And um, I, I drew an absolute blank. I could not think of anything. I wrote on the front cover, you know, thank you for all the wonderful things you've done. And I could not come up with anything. Oh. And uh, yes, it was very telling. I didn't send the card. I didn't do anything with it, but it, it really, it actually sponsored my first book, uh, oh. Life Lessons Learned from a Lousy Mother. And uh, so I found value in what wasn't there and what I put there instead. Because when people say, oh, well, it's who made you who you are. It's like, no, actually you make you who you are. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's yeah. up to you. It's not what happens. It's what you do about it. That's true. That's true. So what industry do you work in right now? I'm in publishing. I'm a writer, ghostwriter. Um, I also help people to do better on podcasts. I'm a podcast guest trainer. I've had nine shows um, from cable TV to, to radio. To train me, train me. I'm, I'm willing to learn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always continuously improving. Listen. Okay. Sia right here is a podcast guru. Okay. We both have roadcaster. Okay. So, but I learned this from YouTube, like pushing buttons and figuring out. I'm like, I'm a teacher. That's what I do best. I love public speaking. That's what I do best. I compete nationally with public speaking, but Wow. Video, video. Hmm. So I'm definitely a novice. I am, um, I would call myself intermediate technical. I wouldn't say like super high technical, but I definitely can manage to navigate everywhere else. Um, but I definitely cannot like figure, you know, most of other technical stuff that's going on. Um, but if you, I, I'm open to feedback, like bring Listen, it. I, I learned from you about restream needing more technical and yeah. um, look, I learned that part from you. I'm not technical. I'm the message <laughs> maestro. I help people to come out with opening lines, hooks that keep the listener listening and ways to tell their story throughout. And then when, are there any final thoughts? That wrap up needs to be tight, needs to be concise. It needs to be compelling. Send them off to a landing page that they can remember when they get off the uh, treadmill at the gym or park the car. Yeah, so, call to action. That CTA is going to happen at the end, right? That's like it. that's what you got to do. Um, I'm working on that because I feel like I can just talk forever, but I think in my brain, I really structured, I'm, I'm all about structuring. And if I see something, I, my brain just go like a, a wheel, like, okay, da, 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 da. okay. Now it's all in file. Now you get to extrapolate it where it's structured. Cause I see the beauty in structure. Uh, my husband sometimes hate it. Cause I'm like, you're so rigid on structure. Da, 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 da. I'm like, that's how my brain works. Okay. So I, <laughs> in order for me to unstructure myself, I do makeup, like just kind of crazy makeup sometimes just so I can unstructure my brain. I'm like, okay, this is the best art you can do, CJ. It, it's not happening anything else. I can't draw a circle. I can't draw a purple. <laughs> I can't do anything, but I can do makeup on my face, right? can't draw a circle. <laughs> no, I can't. If like, CJ, I'm going to shoot you if you don't know how to draw a circle. I'm like, shoot me. I can't draw a circle. Sorry, okay. it's not happening. Jason, are you ready, sir? Oh, you're on mute. Uh-oh. I didn't do that. You did. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> oh, what's happening now? Oh, here we go. Okay. All right. Jason oh. is going to present whenever he unmutes himself. I think I'm unmuted. Yes, I can hear you. Go. Right, here we go. All right. So thank you for everybody uh, for joining. This is going to be pretty much a jam-packed hour. Um, it's going to be full of collaboration 
growth and networking. Um, for those of you that do not know me, my name is Jason Hurley. I currently work for an insurance company and I oversee the branding and communication. Uh, but before we get started, I want to thank Dr. Constance Leyland for providing this platform, this workshop, so that we can all come together and take a deep dive into looking at wellness and our wellness journey. And yes, it is in French. Um, I don't know if anybody speaks French, but oh, no. this is pretty. <laughs> we'll run with it. All right, next slide. All right, so we kind of had a breakout session where we talked about the first time we were introduced to wellness. Um, I'm, we are going to look at the wheels of wellness, where it originated, and the impact that it's had in the last 47 years. Um, I will go ahead and go over the eight dimensions of wellness. And during this time, I'm going to give you five tips for you to write down within each dimension. I also want you to think about some of the soft skills that are being stretched in each dimension. And sometimes, in, in some may be evident, uh, but definitely write that down. Then we'll have another breakout session. This one, I promise to go a little bit longer because six minutes was quick. So we will go ahead and do uh, 10 minutes in that. And we'll talk about what dimension resonated the most with you and why. And then for extra, talk about some of the soft skills that you notice within certain quadrants or dimensions. And then we'll go ahead and close everything out. I'll kind of give you the closing, my closing remarks. Um, at the end of this class, you will get a copy of the presentation and there is a blank uh, wellness will document that you'll be able to have as well. All right, so next slide. So if I ask each and every one of you, what is your definition of wellness? It's gonna be different. And I really wholeheartedly believe that to understand wellness, you need to have one or two things. You need to have an open mind and you need to have an open heart. And the definition of wellness technically is the quality or state of well-being in body and mind, especially as a result of a deliberate effort, an approach to healthcare that emphasizes preventing illness and prolonging life as opposed to emphasizing treating diseases. All right, next slide. So where did this journey begin? So back in 1947, we have, uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Bill Hedder, and he was a director of the National Awareness Institute. And he believed that if human beings concentrated on six dimensions of their life, he was all big about increasing uh, awareness and having balance. He felt that if you concentrated on these six things, that you'll live longer. Well, in 2000, you had three psychologists who kind of took that same mindset and they developed the wheels of wellness. And that actually was brought into play in 2000. So they went from six to seven. And they decided to concentrate on life forces that impact our life in the following areas, family, community, religion, gut, religion, education, government, media, business, and industry. Now that was in 2000, so about a decade later, next slide. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration, they decided to take that and said, hey, let's go ahead and add an area. And this is where we're going to spend the next 15 minutes and really take a deep dive into these eight dimensions of wellness. So as I write, as I go over the different five tips uh, within each dimension, definitely be thinking about the soft skills that come to your mind as well. All right, so the first dimension, emotional, emotional wellness, dealing effectively with life and the creation of satisfying relationships. So tip number one, acknowledge your feelings. And I think one of the biggest things I had to do when I went on my wellness journey was unlearn certain things that had been ingrained in me from a child. And one of those is what my feelings, because I was told that there were certain feelings that if you show that you are being weak. 
Well, I then also realized that there's certain feelings when they come up, all I need is a hug and that stress will go away. And there's certain feelings that I may need somebody to listen to me. I don't need them to solve the problem. I just need a listening ear. And then there's certain uh, feelings that come up where I need to listen. I need somebody to instill wisdom in me. And the best thing about being able to acknowledge your feelings is once you're able to acknowledge the feelings, you'll also be able to associate the triggers that may prompt some of your feelings. So that's important. Tip number two, find a self-care routine that works for you. So a lot of times when anxiety starts to creep up and you feel stressed out, Finding a self-care routine that you could pivot to is going to be so important, especially from an emotional standpoint. So whether that is um, meditation, whether that is yoga, whether that is in the form of some breathing exercises, whatever works for you, definitely go ahead and implement. Tip number three, being honest with yourself that every day you may not be 100% or being honest with yourself and knowing that certain seasons of your life are going to be a little bit more stressful. And I say that because the holidays is a prime example. And if I took a poll and then I say, hey, how do you guys feel about the holidays? Half of you may say, hey, the holidays are great. Then other half of you may say the holidays are a very stressful time for me. So I think just being honest with yourself is very hard to be honest with, your, with other people if you aren't honest with yourself first. Tip number four is going to be reach out and talk to a person or organization as much as necessary. So I would encourage you, if you're ever feeling lonely, isolated, or depressed, to reach out to a person or organization where you feel like you're seen, you're heard, you're understood, and it's safe for you. But definitely do not hesitate to reach out to somebody or an organization if you're feeling lonely, isolated, or depressed. And the last tip for emotional wellness is going to be this. Learn how to say no. And that is one of the hardest things for me um, when I dealt with this emotional wellness. Um, I would say yes to everything. And there's a saying that says, mm -hmm. do not let your mouth put weight on your back. And I did that. I was guilty of that. I would say yes to everything. Then that would lead to burnout. Then that would lead, out, lead to stress. Then that would lead me to feel resentful towards individuals. And it wasn't the individual themselves. I was really mad at myself because I could not say no. And one of the biggest things that you can do, especially with wellness, is practice um, setting proper boundaries, putting boundaries in place. So that's the last tip for emotional wellness. Now, spiritual wellness, that is the broadening of one's sense of purpose and meaning in life. So a lot of times tip number one is going to come into start a practice a routine that you can adhere to every day. So a lot of the times uh, you may start your day with meditation. If you're into prayer, if you're into uh, solitude and quiet time. And the reason why that's so important, even if it's five to 10 minutes a day, is this. So many of us wake up the day stressed out. Or if we go to work, by the time we get to work, we're stressed out. Then we're stressed out from work. We're stressed out from home. And then before we know it, we're a bottle of stress. Now, if you rinse and repeat that five days out of the seven, it's hard. So I would encourage you to start your day off find that solitude and find that peace. And that may help you start your day off in the right direction. Tip number two, find a community that resonates with what you believe in spiritually. And if you believe hey, it has to be more to life than this, finding a community, finding a tribe, finding your voice is so important from a spiritual wellness standpoint. Number three, find a memento if that works for you. One of the best things I love about, and I've known some people that's been through rehab, recovery, um, they've been through treatment centers, they are given a memento. And a lot of times the memento is found in the form of a chip. And that chip means uh, resiliency, long suffering, hope, uh, overcoming, self-management, leadership, all these different things are found in that little memento. 
And I would encourage you if you, if a memento is something that you resonate with and you could look at it and say, hey, this is why I do what I do, I would encourage you to find that. Some religious organizations may have a symbol. And if you resonate with that and you understand, I look at that symbol and that means everything to me, great. Some of you, it may be a picture, a picture of a family member, a picture of a loved one, um, a picture of a place where that that picture gives you peace. But if finding a memento works for you, I encourage you to utilize that. Tip number four, and Dr. Leyland does a class on this, and if you haven't taken it, I encourage you to do so. Vision boarding. From a, from a spiritual standpoint, vision boarding is almost exactly what it sounds like. It's having a vision. It's being able to look at that and then seeing how far you've come and obtain that goal. And a lot of times people are looking for wellness in so many different areas. And vision boarding is so powerful in multiple different dimensions. So I would encourage you to utilize vision boarding. And last but not least is celebrate. Celebrate your journey, celebrate your milestones, celebrate how far you've come. And you can almost utilize this and play it in any dimension that you're talking about in regards to wellness. If you always remember, you're never the same person going in as you are coming out. That will help you tremendously, regardless of the dimension that you're looking at in regards to wellness. All right. Number three is going to be for our growth mindset, continuous improvement type people. So intellectually, recognize development abilities and find ways to expand your knowledge and skills. So tip number one is going to be join a book club. And there's something great about uh, finding like-minded individuals, uh, being able to get multiple points of views, multiple perspectives, and going over a topic or a book that you like. Now, if a book club isn't your thing and, you know, if you don't have anybody in your community that you could go join the book club or virtually, I would encourage you to start your individual journey in regards to increasing how many books you read. And you could do that on an audio book. You could do that with Kindle. You could do that with the old school library. Um, but knowledge is key. So I would tell you and encourage you, keep that growth mindset going and keep reading books. Tip number two. Find topics that interest you. So finding topics that interest you does something because if you find something that you could look forward to that you want to dig your teeth into once a week, every other week, or once a month, it gives you kind of like a sense of joy. And that some of you, it's, hey, I want to go ahead and do higher education, continuing education. I want to go get my master's, a doctorate. Some of you may say, hey, I want to go ahead and learn a second language. Some of you may say, hey, I want to travel. And I want to learn about different cultures. For me personally, I have two loved ones that have ADHD. So one of the things that I dig my teeth into is learning more about ADHD. So I've learned about rejection sensitivity. I've learned about so many different things regarding ADHD. But I tell you that find something that brings you joy that you want to do and dive into that and see where that takes you. Tip number three is going to kind of piggyback off of tip number two, and that's going to be find a community. Find a community, whatever intellectually that you are involved in or that you resonate with, find a community of like-minded individuals where you can find your voice, where you can be in with a collaborative community and you can build each other up. All right, tip number four, journal. Now, some of you may have journaled in the past or still journal. But each and every one of you have a lot of dreams, visions, goals that are in your mind that if you wrote it down, it would be so powerful. And if you write it down, that's almost that accountability to say, hey, look, I've written this dream or vision down. I have to start working on it. And if journaling may not be your thing, I want to I want to leave this with you. There's so much wisdom that each of you have here. But one of the best gifts that you could give to somebody else, maybe a family member or a loved one, is a collection of your thoughts. Because sometimes your journal may be a survival guide for somebody else. So journaling, journaling is so powerful. Maybe not, maybe you may not think for you, but for the next person that's coming behind you. And last but not least is problem solving. So this may seem real elementary and, you know, crossword puzzles. 
Um, there's a bunch of games that you get on your phone that sometimes, man, when you're bored, you're like, hey, let me go ahead and play this game. And it stimulates your mind. So board games, whatever, whatever falls into that category for you, definitely go ahead and utilize that. All right, four. This is a big one because I think when we talk about wellness, a lot of people resonate with this one. Physical. Acknowledge the necessity of physical activity, diet, sleep, and nutrition. So the first tip I'm going to give you regarding physical is to write down your goals. And a lot of times with physical, we need that extra motivation. Um, and whether it comes in the form of sticky notes, whether it comes in the form of, hey, let me just go ahead and put something in my phone as a reminder. Writing your goals down from a physical standpoint is so powerful. Tip number two, find a workout or accountability buddy that could come alongside you on your physical journey. And we all know the gyms are packed in January, not so much in September. And a lot of times because of that, people have lost their motivation. Some people only go to the gym so they can network with somebody. And they say, hey, I have a buddy, I have a community. I like going because of that. And when their buddy stops going, they're like, I'm done. But I think it's so encouraging if that if you need that, find an accountability or a workout buddy that pushes you, pushes you forward when you want to quit. Tip number three, find an incentive that works for you. Now, for some of you, it may be, hey, I like coffee. I like my latte. So that's my incentive. So I may do good five days out of the week. But when the weekend comes, I'm getting my latte. Good. Some of you may say, hey, I want uh, my beach body. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going on vacation. That's my motivation. But for some of you, it may be a little bit deeper, more personal, where it's, hey, if I do not get a hold of my physical wellness, I'm not going to be around for my kids or family. So if that is your motivation, that's huge as well. So whatever incentive you have individually, utilize that. All right, tip number four is start small. And I think anybody from the physical or you've been an athlete or former athlete or you've been, you love the physical piece in regards to wellness. One of the biggest mistakes that most people make with physical is they, they try and do everything at once. They say, I'm going to do physical activity. I'm going to diet. I'm going to do sleep and I'm going to do nutrition all at once. And it becomes overwhelming. So I'm going to tell you, if you're going to concentrate on your sleep and you're getting five hours of sleep and you get an extra hour, count that as a success. If you want to do physical activity, you don't need to go join the gym right away. Maybe just start walking. Maybe go ahead and start with your steps. If you want to talk about diet, that's fine. Maybe incorporate sleep. Um, go ahead and cut out sugar once a week. Cut out your carbs or kind of look at what you're eating daily. And then nutrition. If you say, hey, I need to go ahead and incorporate more fruits and vegetables. That's great. But start small. OK. And the last tip I'm going to give you in regards to physical is this. Go ahead and keep a variety. OK. A lot of times people quit their physical part of their wellness is because they're like, it doesn't work. I didn't see the results right away. You have to remember, regardless of the space and place you're in with wellness, it is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle change. So I encourage you, especially with your physical, have fun with it. Give yourself a little grace, but know that, hey, each day you're taking a step in the right direction. All right, number five is going to be occupational. Personal satisfaction and enrichment as a result of work. So this is all work-related. So the first tip I'm going to give you is this. Find a work-life balance that works for you. So many times when we're at work, we're thinking about home. And when we're at home, we're thinking about work. Wherever you're at, be present. Be present there, especially in the office. Mm. Tip number two, uh, connect with your colleagues. So many of us may go to a work and we do not like who we work with, or we just do not feel connected to the people we work with. I would encourage you, maybe have team building activities, maybe have stand-ups. Get to know people outside of the office. Get to know about their family. Just build that connection. Because there's something powerful about the people that you work with. If you like them, it's so much more rewarding to be able to spend so much time. Because to be honest, a lot of us spend more time at work than we do at home. So it would be so great to have the people that you work with. They're like an extended family. OK, so connect with them as much as you can. Tip number three is going to be ask for feedback. 
And I would encourage you, wherever you work, whatever space and place you're in, if you don't have check-ins with who you report to or your supervisor, at least monthly, I would encourage you to go ahead and take the initiative and schedule check-ins because the biggest thing about work is people want peace, people want security, people want clarity, people want to know, hey, I'm doing a good job. So one of the best things that you can do is schedule your check-ins. All right. Tip number four, and this is something that I think maybe everybody can say, maybe I can do a little bit more of, and that's scheduling your mental health days. Um, burnout is a very real thing in the work profession. And I came from, I work in the insurance industry. I used to work in claims. Claims is a very, 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 very hard industry. And it's very easy to get burned out. And I did not take mental health days and I paid for it. So I would encourage you, take mental health days as much as you can, recharge and reset as much as necessary. And the last tip that I'm going to give you in regards to the occupational one is this, communicate. And when I say communicate, I mean this. When we work, there's so many of us that have so much work and it, we, it's very hard for us to ask for help. On the flip side, once we ask for help, it's very hard to receive the help. And some of us are, do we will work, will work, will work, and we'll take on so much. But I would encourage you, and this kind of goes into your connecting with your colleagues. But if you ever find yourself in the weeds or overwhelmed at work, then sometimes this is the best, just ask for help, okay? And then be willing to accept the help that somebody may be able to give you. And that may help you out there. All right, so we're almost done. The financial piece. Satisfaction of current and future financial situation. So the first tip I'm going to give you this is create a budget. Many of us or some of us may not have dealt with a budget until we either left our parents' house at a young age, or maybe we got into a relationship, or maybe we started a family and budget became very important. So being able to visualize and say, hey, what's coming in, what's going out, and sticking to a budget. There's so many different skills uh, from a time management, from a self-management standpoint that you could learn from creating a budget. Number two, reducing debt. Now, there's so many people that are coming in that talks about reducing debt. The only thing I'm going to say about reducing debt is this. There's so much stress affiliated with financial concern. So... If reducing debt, no matter how big or small, to be able to see that debt chip away, that gives you so much, almost a sense of accomplishment to say, hey, look what I did from where I started to where I am today. So that financial piece that a lot of people are looking for, some of that starts with reducing debt. Number three is saving and investing. Now, when, you, when we were young, some of you maybe had a piggy bank. Nobody told you how much money to put in your piggy bank. Some of you threw pennies in there, nickels, dimes, quarters, uh, money whenever you came to that. But when it came to cracking over that, open that piggy bank and saying, hey, look, I'm going to go buy this. That same principle stays with us. We're just older now. But there's something great about saving and investing for a rainy day for whenever you need that. So if that works for you, I encourage you. Save as much as you can whenever you can for that rainy day. Tip number four is going to be plan for retirement. Now, I know that not everybody has a 401k, a pension, or a Roth IRA that they can pull from. But some of you are financial savvy and you've paid more on your house, or you're making sure your saving is, I'm making sure when I, when I retire, I do not have a mortgage, or I do not have a car note. That's also saving for retirement. So whatever saving for retirement looks like for you, I encourage you to do so. And last but not least is set long-term goals. And what I'll say about this is when we pass away, we can't take everything with us. But one thing we can do is leave something behind. And one of the best long-term goals that you could plan for is your kids and the next generation that comes before you. So if you're looking for another thing that may resonate with you in regards to financial, long-term goals may be what works for you. Now, environmental is going to be a little, that, that's hard for some people to kind of wrap their arms around. 
good health through the use of pleasant and stimulating environments that, ooh, the French is, I cannot see what the rest, ah, that foster well-being. And what I'll say about this is the first thing um, is declutter. So a lot of us that when we look at our home life or we look at our workstation, it bothers you to have clutter everywhere. And some of you may live with somebody that is a very contentious spot with them with declutter. They're big on declutter. So if you did not know why they are the way they are, this is that environmental wellness that they're channeling. Decluttering, there's something so peaceful about when you can move things and everything is where it needs to be. But if that resonates with you or that may be a sore spot with you, um, decluttering is one tip that I would give. The next thing is going to be spend time outside. You'll hear so many people say, hey, man, go out and go outside and spend time with nature. And if that works for you, there's something peace and calm for with just going outside, gathering your thoughts, getting away from everything and um, coming back to the situation. So if that works for you, go ahead and do so. Tip number three is going to be natural light. And I did not know this until I kind of took a deeper dive on this. But the natural light, science has proved that it's calming. And a lot of times people sleep better with natural light entering into the home. So if that's something that may work for you, um, I would encourage you to try that out and use natural light um, as opposed to maybe all of the lights that you may have within your home. Tip number four is going to be gardening. And when I first think about gardening, I think about fruits and vegetables and growing your product and then going ahead and cooking them. But gardening has another uh, benefit to it. And think about plants and flowers. And there's something that, you know, a lot of people like flowers, but there's something peaceful and calm just by having flowers or plants in your, uh, in your home. So if that resonates with you, I encourage you to utilize that. And last but not least is going to be kind of like the self-explanatory is Use, using energy efficient uh, items as much as necessary. Some of you use reusable products uh, that you may like, and that may come into, <laughs> and that may come into like a coffee mug. Let's say you like your coffee. And you have a coffee mug that you use and you don't want to use what maybe a Starbucks or another place that you use that they're going to give you. So using reusable ob objects may work. And the last one, is going to be social awareness. And that's going to be develop a sense of connection, belonging, and a strong support system. So the first tip I'm going to give you is set boundaries. And what I mean by setting boundaries from a social standpoint is this. Protect the energy that you allow in your life. There are certain people that come into your life, they have so much energy and so much joy, and it's contagious. But then you have certain people that come into your life they are so negative and they can suck the energy out of the room. So I'm going to tell you this, put the proper boundaries in place and protect your energy and where you invest your energy at all costs. Tip number two is going to be, you may want to limit the amount of news and social media that you have. Now, my job is all social media, but I'm going to tell you this, when you feel sometimes that social media or the news may control you as opposed to you controlling it, it may be a time for you to sit back and reevaluate some things. Um, you'll hear the quote that says, comparison is a thief of joy. So many times we compare each other on social media and we could be looking at somebody's highlight reel, but behind the scenes, that person may be hurting. So if you find yourself so much so involved and so much time in social media, but it's taken away from other areas of your life, you may need to reevaluate if that works. Tip number three is going to be plan ahead activities. A lot of people do this naturally and they're planning ahead for the week. They're planning ahead when they're going shopping. They're planning ahead they're cooking. They're planning ahead when they're going to spend time with friends and family. So planning ahead, giving yourself something to look for, forward to each week works for you, that's great. Number four is gonna be self-reflection. If you do not do self-reflection now, I would encourage you to do so. At the end of every day, reflect on the opportunities that presented itself to you. 
good or bad. And then the next day, if you don't like what you have, if you're blessed and fortunate enough to have the next day come, change. Keep what works, take out what didn't work, but you'll live to see another day. And the last but not least is going to be tip number five and engage in activities that give you joy and reduce your stress. And think about some of the things you do in your downtime. And that is going to be, for some of you, it may come into reading books. It may come into uh, watching movies. It may come in the form of, hey, I just want to go ahead and look at the porch and sit out on the front porch and just be quiet. Some of it, it may be, hey, I need to take a nap. And I look forward to that. Nobody can bother me when I'm taking a nap. So whatever you find, whatever works for you, find things that give you joy and reduce your stress. So I've talked enough and I've talked a lot. <laughs> so let's go ahead and um, go into breakout sessions. And then let's talk about what dimension resonated the most with you and why. And then if there's any soft skills that you feel that certain dimensions pull out of you uh, more so than others. And we'll come back in about 10 minutes.
Aha. <laughs> you didn't have a choice. You were just still talking. I see that. I, know. I was so busy going. going. Oh my God. Okay. We're back. Okay. We are back. So, Jason, do you want me to put the poll or are you good? I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to go ahead and pose this down because I want to respect everyone's time. So, we have about three minutes. Oh. All right. Let's go ahead and put the poll in. Let's see what you guys know. What quadrant in the wellness wheel resonated with you the most? Hmm. I'm going to give you guys like 30 more seconds. Click that button. I want to see. I don't see the poll. You Can you direct me where to go? Can you guys oh, see the poll? Mm-hmm. What? Okay. I'm going to end the poll. Right. And then let's see if I can share the poll again. Okay. Um, because I saw that it says poll ended. Great. I don't know if I can. I saw it at the beginning logging oh, in. Oh, there, oh, there it goes. Oh, there's the results. Yeah. The results. Oh, it's emotional. Wow. There were eleven people participating. Yeah. Wow. Ah, emotional is a big one. Oh yeah. No one on financial, really. You all rich? Give me some money. You all rich? Give me some money. Bring it. I'm on a teacher's salary. Bring it. No, we're just trying to avoid it. (laughs) What? Listen, this is really helpful, by the way. Right. Thank you. Wow. All right, so let's go ahead and bring this home. Go for it. All right, so you have the slide. Go to um, the next one. All right, so I'm going to leave you with this. There are six things that you can always keep in mind, uh, regardless of what quadrant you're looking at or dimension. And so these six things always kind of think about. And number one is going to be your uh, choices that you make. Number two is going to be the decisions that you make. Number three are going to be the habits that you have in place or do not have in place yet. Number four is going to be your goals. Number five is going to be the time, where you choose to invest your time, what you choose to invest your time in. And six is going to be your patience, because I believe you're going to need to be patient with yourself, patient with each other. So always remember those uh, six things. So I'm going to leave you with this quote, your words have the power to hurt, to heal, open minds, open hearts, and change the world. Never forget the responsibility you have over the words that you speak. And I think words are powerful, and I think if we're we're real honest with ourselves, when we look at our overall wellness, if we think about the impact that words have had to come into play, words have been powerful in regards to our wellness and kind of help shape how we feel about our wellness. So as you take time to evaluate and you think about the dimension you want to concentrate on, and then you plan about the self-care routines that you're going to implement, and then you're going to talk about the different things that you're going to put into action. When you look back at your life, you're going to think one of two things. Either I'm glad I I did or I wish I had. And so always think about when you think about your wellness, always say, I'm glad I did. And with that, I am done. And I appreciate everybody uh, stopping by and joining today. And yes, Gerald has a book that I learned about in the breakout session that I think is of value. He went ahead and put it in the chat and I'm going to go ahead and order it. Personally, for me, I'm going to go ahead and order it uh, on my Kindle. But thank you, Gerald, for sharing that because I think that's a cool way to end this class. So yeah. that is it. Um, If I don't have your email, I am sending certificates, not that you want it in case you do, because I do have one student here. Richard is in my, are you in my accounting class? I don't even remember our business class. I'm teaching too many classes. Yeah, it's accounting. Okay. So we're on accounting class. We're late night, like 10 PM, right? Until PSD. So um, if you guys want the certificate, go ahead and put your email in here because I can save the chat and I'll send you your certificate. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. We do this next month again with Pita, Dr. Dufrance. Yes. Right there. 
Um, and it's about leadership. So if you guys want to go to Lua by com and under workshop, um, you can see and sign up there to get it. It's always, we always give free workshop every month on top of our courses that we sell to you guys as well. All right. All right. Have a nice day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Jason, stay. You Thank you. Have a great okay. day. Bye. Peter, stay. See you, Michelle. Go ahead. Okay. So, how was that? Nice job. Well done. Like it? Thank you. So it was interactive, right? You kept it. You kept it moving. You were in and out. We were in and out of the breakout rooms. You interacted with the poll. I felt like you're an engaging speaker. Yeah, man. Uh, the only critique I have is Jesus Christ. Will you get some knickknacks on your desk behind you? I mean, you look like you're in a furniture store. I know. I know. Yeah. On the wall, maybe. I don't know. Something, buddy. I mean, let me send you a picture of myself. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna put the background for the next one. I'll put the background. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just. Oh my you. gosh, we gotta get one of these for you. The the little yeah. background. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. I know it's so like sterile, like very sterile, right? Every, every time we meet, I'm like, that guy in the basement. Yeah. The most organized guy, organized guy I know. My desk is a bomb hit all the time. That's why it's always blurry, man. <laughs> nice job. It was a good job. It was a Thank really you. good job. Do you feel good? Do you feel supported? Yeah, yeah I like it. I'm so glad. I'm so happy. Um, this is good boosting for all of us, for you especially to hit and shine. Um, and then let's go ahead and make sure that our classes are are out. I I'm gonna try to take some of your class in Idio Flow to put it in there. Um, I paid someone and he ran away with my money for the developing of the website because I didn't have the time to finish it up. Um, on certain aspects and yeah. And I'm like, dude, I'm on a teacher's salary and you just ran. You're going to have bad karma, but I'm not going to yes. stress about it. It's not like I have all the money flowing, but at the same time, it's like maybe he needed it more than I did. I don't know. I haven't told my husband because he's going to be like, I told you. So I'm not, I'm not telling was him. Was it a referral? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. Have you ever used Fiverr? Yeah, that's what I used. And oh. I used Upwork too, back and forth, but yeah. So lesson learned, it's not the first time people ran away. And I always just think, okay, they need it more than I do. That's the only way I can settle myself or I'm going to be start drinking <laughs> tea a lot more. <sighs> I can't drink alcohol. Mm. If I do, I take a nap. And I can't take a nap in the middle of my activities. So I can't, I can't do it. Yeah. yeah Jason, good. good job. I appreciate you. you. That was amazing. Thank you. Um, and Pete, you're next. All right, man. Like I said, I, I got a whole, I got a big long flight. I get to put together a power, my uh, keynote or whatever. What do you want? You want keynote or PowerPoint, or do you care? PowerPoint okay. is really work, easier. Man. Yeah, PowerPoint's easier to put in here. I'm your support system. All you got to do is show up and talk. And I don't want you like fiddling because Jason's like, oh, what am I if I control? I'm like, no, brother. I just want you to concentrate on talking because I will do the the back end of it. So no. Well, thank you, thank you for all your help. You Good job, Jay. Thanks. See y'all. Right. Back to my day, Jeff. Okay, right. bye. Thanks.